your home for libertarianism in action. We provide you with real free market solutions using the freedom umbrella of direct action to give you the tools necessary to increase your own personal liberty. As Ludwig von Mises said, liberty is always freedom from the government. And now your host, Shane. And good evening and welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio here on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. That is fprnradio.com. LUA Radio is your home for the peaceful philosophy of voluntarism, not only to provide you with the information necessary and in understanding and utilizing this ideology, but we also give you the proper tools to create the freedom you desire in your own life by way of the freedom umbrella of direct action. Today is February 28, 2016. I'm your host, Shane. Uh, the website is libertyunderattack.com. With me are my co-hosts, Stan and Danny. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. It's a pleasure as always. How are we doing? Not too bad. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Can't complain. Can't complain. Stan, how are you doing, brother? Doing good. Doing good. Good to hear. Good to hear. So, gentlemen, uh, is there anything you guys would like to uh, discuss before we move forward? Well, I figured out I have an appreciation for bigger girls now, because no matter where you grab them, it kind of feels like titties. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair uh, enough. Yep. It's pertinent, pertinent information, so it's, it's yep. good that you disclose that. <laughs> but uh, I was I was gonna mention, uh, and Dana, I saw you post about this, but uh, I've just been rewatching season two of House of, of House of Cards since that new season's coming out. I'm really excited for that. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. I'm excited to see a psychopath obtain power. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty realistic. <laughs> yes, pretty realistic. So yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. I think that comes out uh, on March fourth. So if uh, any of you guys uh, haven't watched House of Cards, I highly recommend it. I don't watch a lot of uh, Netflix and such, but uh, yeah, if you want to see uh, uh, the evils of government and uh, and corrupt politicians and such, like uh, in, in actuality, yeah, it is it is it's, it is dramatic. And it's a TV series, but nonetheless, it's I think you can probably uh, ascertain some information from that. So uh, yeah, with that said, uh, the number to call is two one eight eight nine five three eight one eight. Or on Skype at FPRN Radio Live. If you have a uh, question for our guests this evening or uh, just want to join in on the conversation, please do give us a call. Uh, we'll also be watching the chat available at fprnradio.com forward slash listen dash live. So feel free to pose your questions there as well. Liberty Under Attack is covered by a BIPCOT no government license, which allows reuse by anyone except for governments or their agents. You can learn more at bipcot.org. And if you have a podcast or a website or something along those lines, you can uh, obtain that license as well. Uh, it's not really, there's nothing really to obtain. You just put the, uh, just put the logo on, 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 on the site or just do what I just did uh, in your podcast. Uh, but yeah, if you want to support the broadcast, we definitely appreciate it. Uh, share the website with your friends and family. And since this broadcast has just begun, uh, we'd appreciate it if you post a link to the uh, Listen Live page on your social media accounts. Uh, again, that is uh, fprnradio.com forward slash listen dash live. Uh, the more people we can get to tune into volunteerism, the better. With that said, let's get on with it. Uh, tonight's broadcast will be the eighth edition of the Direct Action series. Unlike the political means, which requires subjugation before those who claim to be our rulers, the ec economic means provides you with the ability to take the initiative yourself in creating the freedom you so desire in your life. In the first hour, we'll take a look at uh, culture jamming by talking to Corin Bermudes, the ex-drummer of Anchor Lines and founder of the Never Known Band. Uh, solo band, uh, rather. Uh, in the third hour, we'll be talking about free-range parenting uh, with Lenore Skenazy. And in the final hour, I'll play, play the uh, spoken discourse for the newest edition of my Adventures in Illinois Higher Education series, which I suppose could be considered a form of whistleblowing, another item on the FUDA. Uh, but I'll leave that up for you to decide. So I, I guess first, before we, before we bring in uh, Corwin, I, let me provide a little background. Uh, Corwin was the drummer of the now uh, defunct band Anchor Lines, uh, which will always remain a favorite of mine. Uh, they played two shows in Peoria, Illinois, about 45 minutes away from me, and they're definitely one of the chillest fucking bands I've ever had the pleasure of hanging out with, and uh, uh, I've, hung, I've, I've, met, I've met a lot of bands, so uh, definitely uh, means something. Uh, after their sh last show here, which was probably, I think, two years ago or around, around there, uh, I remember sitting outside with Corn for an hour or so just discussing how fucked up the world was and uh, about, ver about various conspiracies as well. Uh, that being said, I've had a, uh, a few bands on in the past month, and I remember that uh, I had yet to bring him on the broadcast. I'm not quite sure why. But uh, after leaving Anchor Lines, he began a solo project called Never Known and released the first EP and two music videos within the past month. 
Uh, so without further ado, Corwin, uh, welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing good, Shane. Thanks for having me. And also thank you for, you know, kind words about my band and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Usually when I reflect back on Anchorland Zone, my usual thoughts are just like, man, it's super exciting that anybody cared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and that's not a problem. Definitely not a problem. But yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing that uh, your guys' band was able to actually come to Illinois because I know a lot of um, a lot of smaller bands uh, struggle to even get uh, uh, like on the East Coast. They struggle to get uh, outside of their own state. So that's definitely definitely incredible. Yeah, and uh, playing in Illinois was sweet. Um, I think next to actually no, ahead of St. Louis, like Illinois is definitely like my favorite show that I've played so far, especially like, outside the New England region. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, good deal, good deal, good deal. Um, so uh, here's how I see this first hour going, just to kind of give the listeners an idea, and, and you as well, Corman. Uh, we'll discuss anchor lines uh, for uh, uh, anchor lines and never known for in this uh, first segment, and uh, then when we come back from that break, we'll do fascist book, and then we'll kind of just talk about the issues. Uh, so first off, uh, Corman, uh, tell tell the listeners a little about yourself and uh, and what you do. Sure. Well, I I guess there's not a ton to tell. Um, I've been playing in mainly metal bands for the past. Uh, 11 years or so. Uh, most recent full band I had was Anchor Lines, which broke up a little over a year ago. And uh, since then, I've been doing a solo project called Never Known, um, where I just kind of wanted to see if I could make a band where I was the only member. Um, I don't know. So it's really cool to be on the show, though, because, um, you know, as I was coming up in bands and everything, um, you know, I kind of had the experience of feeling, you know, the anger and frustration that I think a lot of people who are younger and get into metal kind of experience. And then later on, as I got older, kind of figuring out where that anger was coming from, you know, what I was observing in the world and how that played into what I cared about, what I wanted to write about in the band, things like that. So um, everything that, uh, you know, LUA does, I think is great. I'm, uh, you know, incredibly supportive of that and it's super exciting to be on. Well, I definitely appreciate that. I definitely appreciate that. And yeah, I, I know what you mean, though, because uh, I mean, yeah, with for the past uh, couple of years, I finally kind of, I finally got grounded within the past year after I started the show. But there was definitely a lot of anger and frustration. Uh, but I, I think the, the show definitely matured me, which is good. And I've got a more of a level head. But yeah, there is that point. Uh, and yeah, obviously, obviously, I drum too, so I, I, I definitely had my angry moments to, as well. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, you're, you're definitely correct uh, on that note. So, uh, so Corman, tell us, uh, tell us a bit about Anchor Lines. Uh, how did that band get started? Um, I mean, kind of like most bands get started. You know, at that point, it was my, I think, third or fourth band, and uh, I really just wanted to get back into playing music. And I think at the time, I responded to a Craigslist ad. Um, from a guy looking to start a metal band and I was like hey that's my thing so while driving to his house and really hoping I wasn't going to get raped I uh, you know was I I don't know just really excited about getting back into that Um, so of course that was like kind of messing around for fun and then you know some other people came into the band that I met through mutual friends Uh, Jeff being one of the first people who came in uh, Jeff was the vocalist of Anchor Lines Um, and at first it kind of started out like uh, you know, most bands seem to follow where it was, you know, what do we do to get followers? What do we do to get fans? And then, you know, we kind of lucked out in actually having sort of a following first in New England and then, um, you know, sort of on a national scale where people, you know, were tuning into our Facebook and watching our videos and stuff. And uh, and I think at that point, you know, the priority went from, OK, you know, instead of writing to try and get bigger, you know, what do we really care about? What is important to us? How can we write about things that are outside of ourselves and affect more people than just ourselves. Um, And so I I think that being able to maintain sort of a genuine approach to the content, uh, I think, helped us, you know, keep going for the six years that the band lasted. Indeed, indeed. And you guys uh, and you guys, you guys uh, remained unsigned throughout, right? That's right. Um, And I think for most of us, staying unsigned, no matter what, was a big priority. Um, especially with where uh, the technology improved, the resources improved, you know, the social community and the the internet community for musicians became really good. Uh, you know, it became very apparent that, you know, we could do most of it ourselves, and the more we could do ourselves, the more control we had. So, uh, you know, that was definitely a big goal for the band the whole time. Indeed, indeed, and yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of seeing that trend here because um, I, I we had we had a uh, Derek Caperton uh, from King Conquer, the cars for King Conquer on last Sunday, mm-hmm. and uh, they they were used they were signed to Media Scare for a couple of years. I think they released two albums with them, but uh, yeah, they decided to go unsigned as well. Uh, and yeah, with the capabilities of the internet, 
uh, and and social media, it's it's definitely a lot more plausible for bands to just say, you know, screw the label, let's do it all ourselves. And also just with the with the ease of uh, of actually recording and such. Now, if, if someone knows actually how to do that, it, I wouldn't be able to do it. But uh, but I'm sure <laughs> I could if I if I learned. But uh, uh, so Anchor Lines had uh, three three releases. Uh, there was the Choices EP, uh, the uh, 2012 EP, and then uh, the Hollow Eyes single. Uh, in mm-hmm. your opinion, how how did the band progress musically and lyrically throughout uh, throughout those three albums? Um, I think that you know over the years we got better playing together, so we weren't afraid to write. I think more intricate music in terms of um, you know r- writing more challenging and sort of aggressive style. Uh, and then, like I said, the lyrical content really went from you know, sort of writing about, you know, very kind of selfish and, and self-serving things in terms of like our lives and our experiences to, you know, acknowledging that we had a platform to sort of express what we thought about the world as a whole. Um, you know, so we express ideas about our, our takes on government, economics, social issues, things like that. So um, indeed, indeed. Know, definitely just maturing as we went from being teenagers to being in our you know early 20s, mid 20s and all that. Also, I listened to the episode with Derek from King Conquer like a couple of nights ago, and I don't know, it was just cool because like I love that band as so the whole time. I was like, oh my god, it got Derek from King Conquer. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely, yeah, it was definitely awesome. I remember messaging him last year, like I only started the broadcast because that, that was something I wanted to do like for for a while was interview since I I love metal and I love uh, metal bands that I talk about real shit. Uh, mm-hmm. And that uh, that have like a message aligned with freedom, um, but that didn't. I actually didn't have uh, didn't actually interview a metal artist or a band until uh, until last month. Uh, so I'm just now kind of trying to reach back out to some of some of these people and, and see if I can get them on, uh, which luckily I've, I've had uh, great success with. So um, mm-hmm. w- what what ultimately led to uh, the uh, disbanding of Anchor Lines? Uh, I mean, all the story in the book. You know, it got to be too expensive. We kind of hit a wall in terms of the reach that we had. Uh, people wanted to go to college. People wanted to focus on their jobs. Uh, it just kind of wasn't feasible to keep going in the state that it was in. And I know that at least for myself in particular, I was like, you know, the place I was at was I love making music. Um, you know, I'll never not want to make music. But I, I think that there's this mentality for a lot of people who start bands where or kind of follow any passion or dream where the idea is like you have to throw everything away for your dream and sacrifice everything and you know, nothing else matters. And, and I don't know, I guess as I've gotten older, I kind of feel like that isn't true. You know, I think if you're trying to accomplish anything, the most important thing is to just be content in how you're going about it and to accomplish it at your own pace. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with working a day job and, you know, making change happen incrementally as you progress toward achieving what you want to achieve. And so that's kind of where I was at. And that's kind of what Never Known was born out of was just I wanted to do something on my own terms at my own pace. Indeed, indeed, yeah. Um, very good, very good. Um, yeah, okay, so um, let's go ahead and go to, uh, to uh, um, I'd like to play the work video for Hollow Eyes uh, that you uh, put together so listeners can hear uh, some music and uh, also get, get another glimpse into one of your, uh, one of your talents. You, you did do that uh, lyric video as well, didn't you? I did. That took forever. If anybody wants to become a professional video editor, Give up on your dream now. Don't do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> indeed, indeed. But before we do that, there was I, I did want to mention one thing. You, you kind of talked about uh, uh, you're mentioning how people think they have to give up everything, everything for their dreams. And what you're kind of discussing, we had a um, the gentleman. The gentleman's name was uh, Jake Desillis, and he is uh, early retirement and financial independence. That was that's kind of his specialty, and he mm-hmm. called it he called it a side hustle. So I uh, get your get your side your side hustle could, could also be used for for musical projects and, and artistic projects as well. Um, that's but a, that's uh, a good term. But, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a side, yep, side hustle. <laughs> it's pretty much what what the show is. But uh, let's go ahead and go to uh, um, uh, Mr. Producer. Please cue up clip one. Cue up clip one. All right, bump it. Yeah. 